black lines that you see are the lines that Travis drew in with the mule about what a month ago? Yeah. A month and a half ago? Middle of March. Yeah, yeah middle of March. March. And what happens is whenever we cross out of any of those lines, the planter automatically starts shutting off rows. So then we aren't putting corn seed down outside. So he went through and he outlined all of the waterways. So whenever he goes through a waterway, he doesn't have to pick the planter up and it won't put any seed down. Now over long term or a long period of use, that'll save you on seed because you are saving quite a bit by not just wasting the seed. Good morning everybody. We are here in the 4640 with Travis. And we are going to run you guys through the Ag Leader monitor that we mounted on the 46. Now, as many of you will know, we got the Ag Leader monitor last fall and we use it to monitor our yields with the combine. Uh, so we decided that we would use it uh, to hook it up to the planter and we were told that it's a lot better than any other monitor that we've used in the past. So we decided to try it out. Now. I'm not a total expert on it. I haven't been around it all that much, so Travis knows more about it than I do. Uh, he's going to talk about it some, some, and he's just going to run us through it. it. It actually looks pretty nifty, so let's see what we got. All right, this is Travis talking. Now I want to give you a little bit of a rundown with this Ag Leader monitor with the, us sitting still and just kind of run you through what it's telling us. Then I'd like to show you what we're seeing as we're going across the field. Also want to touch base a little bit on the guidance that we have in the tractor but first off this is just um, our coverage map all these lines you see like we've said earlier all these lines were run by me on the ATV I uh, went and outlined all the strips all the boundaries all the waterways so the planter will engage and disengage going through the waterways you can see up here in this corner that's exactly what the planter did that equals seed savings because you're not dumping seed down in a place where you're not going to make any money off of them. And we're going to back over to this screen. Basically, a little bit more information, a little bit more detailed. You get your highs and your lows of your population. It'll tell you which row is the highest, which row is the lowest. You can select that, which is it showing up here. It's the population across all the rows in the planter. This is your singulation. Then again, it's all for all the rows and how they're performing. It will show you your skips and your doubles, spacing quality. This is our gauge wheel down pressure screen. We only have eight sensors on this because we don't have the hydraulic downforce yet. This is basically just giving us an idea of how our planter is performing as far as the down pressure across any given point in the field. We haven't done any sod with it yet, which we're actually sitting on a strip that I'll have to turn the pressure up. and. Um, Hopefully we can get something with that, not promising anything. But um, something that we've, uh, if you've been watching my channel, I know Ryan hasn't done much planting yet, but I've been saying in video previously that we're planting two varieties. We're uh, doing more testing and uh, wanting to see what varieties perform where and how well they can perform. So what we're doing, this planter is actually split with uh, seed and our varieties are 5777 and 6462, a DeKalb variety and an Agrigold variety. This is the first year that I've ever planted Agrigold. Oh. Now this, oh. this is the, what the map looks like showing what seed was planted where because this monitor will keep track of where we're putting uh, the seed down and where at in the field. So when we come back through this fall, this same monitor is going to be in the combine. So as we harvest, we're going to get yield information from the combine by what the seed is doing. And we'll be able to make production decisions for next year based on how this field performed, how these varieties performed, and where they were in the field. Um, I got different populations going in. This monitor also monitors that. I'm planning between 27 and 30,000 population right now, and I'm going to be bumping that up to, I believe, 38 to 40,000 on the better producing ground. 
Now, when I run it, run this, this is how I normally have it set up. I have it set so it's giving me a behind the tractor view so I can see where I'm going. Um, I keep it on this screen here because I like to know how my rows are performing population wise. And I can also see my singulation here. This uh, technology, what it allows us to do is when you're looking at 12 rows of cost of planter, compared to previous monitors we've used in the past, they never gave us that much information. This one almost overloads you with information, and that is not a bad thing. It's just that when you're not prepared for it, it's a little overwhelming. So we've never been able to see the singulation, the gauge wheel, the spacing quality, or the skips and doubles on any of our previous monitors. All of this down here, we've never had in the past. And that is very, very important to us. Yeah. Okay guys, what I normally like to run here is I'm gonna have it on the seed monitor. This is our singulation, the percent of population for what I have it set for. I have it set to, uh, my average rate is set at 32,000. And this is actually my population across the field. It goes from zero to 40,000 plus. Now what I'm doing is I'm going through and hitting my headlands where I know I'm going to be doing a lot of turning with the lower population because I don't see much point in putting down a higher population when I know that it's already going to be dinged from us driving on it. They say we've never been able to do this in the past and actually see the response to doing this. So this is our first year doing tests like this. I want to show you guys this is the seed depth gauge ideally we want corn at two inches and we just started on some sod ground so I went through and put down the closing wheels of full pressure and I cranked up the PSI on our down pressure bags now we got a seat here we got a seat here here is top of the soil. Now this is a highly debated topic if you put the gauge on top of the seed, in the middle of the seed or at the bottom of the seed. My theory is I set it down in the soil right there and guess what? It's good enough. Now I don't know how close you guys can see that but that is right at two inches and I am very very happy with that. I've gone as deep as three and as shallow as right on top of the ground. Uh, for you guys that are wondering, the stuff that went on top of the ground didn't yield worth a dang. Dang. smart pattern. Now what a smart pattern is when it comes to this ag leader uh, guidance is you have to make a pass, your first pass in any particular field and what it will do once you are done and you uh, turn back around and come back in your next pass below that one, it will automatically pick up where your last pass was and draw a line which is what this red line is, is what we're currently following that is what it'll pick up and tell you what you need to follow or what it is going to follow. You say this field that we're in right now, I planted this whole thing except for the outside round obviously with the on track from Ag Leader and RTK guidance. And that's uh, fixed based RTK. Now if I want to switch my line, because uh, how smart pass is, is that you're picking up lines that I did earlier you know as uh, you get in towards the center of the field you can uh, hit this button right here and switch between the different lines you have 
that you can do. See, we're bouncing from the left side of the waterway to the right side. I'm gonna hit the guidance button, button. I'm gonna drop the planter in the ground, and then it's gonna do its job. Now, with me not having to steer, what this allows me to do is to watch the planter's performance and uh, check my speed, my singulation, because your singulation varies with where you are and um, your speed. What I want to do here, see my singulation dropped down to 89. Now let's jump them back up to 97. Um, I found that, actually you can thank my, our dad, he found that 4.7 miles an hour, yet again, ignore that. 4.7 miles an hour is about ideal to get the best uh, singulation out of this unit. Now granted, every planter is different, every uh, farmer is going to be different, so you guys got to play with what your, with your speed and what your equipment are capable of doing. I see as we're coming into the waterway, as each roll gets to it, they automatically shut off. And just like that, to disengage the on track, all you have to do is turn the steering wheel and it'll disengage. We're all going to thank Ryan, uh, your host from Al Farms Work, because he's currently folded up like a pretzel in here trying to get you your footage. <laughs> <laughs>